Hello everyone and assalamu alaikum. This is Introduction to Psychology Part 2 by Dear Knowledge. Okay, we have successfully completed the lesson 2 of the chapter 1 and lesson two, uh, in lesson 2 we have discussed all about the classification of motivation on the basis of different theories and we also discussed how different theories have uh, classified uh, the motives. So uh, if you have missed any of the previous lecture, I've given all the links in the description box. Uh, go ahead, click on those links and watch those videos. Uh, in case if any of the link is missing, you can ask me in the comment section and I'll upload uh, or I will update the description section for you. So uh, from today in this video we will start the lesson 3 and it's all about the physiological motives. So we will be discussing all those aspects, all those points, all those factors which play a major role uh, and which comes under the physiological motive. So under the topic of physiological motives we will be discussing the hunger, thirst, sexual motivation, uh, sleep and rest, regulation of temperature, um, need to avoid pain, maternal love, need to respiration, and need to eliminate. So uh, these are basic inborn biological drives with which every member of the species begin life. And they are called primary needs because they are vital to life and essential requirements for living life. And um, these are necessary for survival and they are sometimes referred to as biological needs because they have a biological origin um, that is uh, the origin lies somewhere in the body of the organism so um, most of the physiological drives are deeply rooted in our biological makeup and um, our body needs certain substances for its growth as well as for its day-to-day -day maintenance with a view to keep the balance of various biochem biochemical processes within the body known as homeostasis or we can say homeostatic. So such a balance is essential for the individual's survival. And... Um, body temperature must be must not get too high or too low the body must not be too acidic or alkaline so it must not become too concentrated it must have a certain amount of sugar in it and if these limits are exceeded then the individual becomes sick and the, uh, the person may die so with help of all these motives which we'll be discussing under the physiological motives a body preserved homeostatic uh, function or uh, body preserves homeostasis. So uh, let's start with the first physiological motive which is hunger and then we will uh, discuss thirst and then we will discuss sexual motivation, sleep and rest, regulation of temperature, need to avoid pain, maternal love, need to respiration and need to eliminate. So let's start with the hunger. Now, the body is always using up materials and growth um, in the repair of tissues and in the storage of nerve supplies. Now, body needs energy and energy comes from food. So, this is a tissue need. Now, there are two types of hunger which we will be discussing. Uh, one is the general hunger of food needs and the second one is specific food needs. Now, um, if you talk about the general hunger or food needs, or whenever there is a feeling of contraction in the stomach or when someone reports weakness or lightheadedness, there is a need to eat food. And about the specific uh, food needs, so specific food needs arise uh, whenever the individual need of food is not because of hunger but because of his preference of that particular food. So after much research it has been found that uh, hunger drive is caused by um, contractions of the stomach, the reduction of sugar in the blood uh, and there are some important other important factors like the neural factors which play uh, an important role in in the cause of hunger drive, the smell and taste of food, the side of food, preferences and culture, and learning experience and cognitive factors. So uh, we will be discussing this one by one so let's start with the contraction of stomach. Now, Cannon and Washburn and Carlson in 1916 uh, in an experiment made the subject swallow a balloon. 
you know, a tube was connected to this balloon and the one end of which was connected to chymograph and um, the balloon was filled with air and the experimental was asked uh, to uh, press a key when he uh, uh, felt hungry. Now, by this experiment, they concluded that um, hunger is due to contraction in the stomach. Then the second one is the reduction of sugar in the blood. Now, the reduction of sugar in the blood starts hunger sensation while its excess reduces it. And um, important factor in hunger drive is neural. When the information of contraction in stomach, the rate of sugar in blood reaches hypothalamus and cortex, the hunger drives takes place. So when hypothalamus is stimulated, hunger increases. And Eating and hunger is also strongly affected by the smell and taste of food. The sight of food is also an important factor in eating and food that are attractive in appearance are hard to resist and many people just eat more than required. And depending on the preference and culture in which a person is raised, the thought of any food item may induce hunger panges or um, hunger panges or feeling of nausea. Now such Contrasting reaction uh, suggests that although hunger does not indeed stem from biological needs, um, it is strongly influenced by learning and experience and by cognitive factors. Now, it is a complex uh, need which uh, sometimes causes eating disorders such as obesity, which is the state of being significantly overweight, and um, anoxia, uh, anorexia nervosa, uh, which is an eating disorder in which an individuals starve themselves and often lose a dangerous amount of weight. And uh, another eating disorder is bulimia, and uh, such people who are facing the disorder bulimia, they have periods of binge eating alternatively with periods of self-induced purging. So these were, uh, these were, this was all about the hunger. Now the next topic uh, which we will be discussing right here is thirst. Now water which uh, water is necessary for survival we all know that now water is necessary for survival as food but we can live without food for some time and not water and it is an essential item in body's use of food and it is constantly being lost through the lungs skin and kidneys now what drives us to drink depends upon dryness of throat uh, that can be uh, that is we drink to dry uh, to wet a dry mouth and to taste a good beverage and loss of water from cells causes dehydration. Now, osmoreceptors, um, osmoreceptors are the hypothalamus nerve cells which generate nerve impulses when they are dehydrated. Now, these nerve impulses act as a signal for thirst. Um, drinking and thirst is triggered by a loss of water from the osmoreceptors which is called uh, cellular dehydration thirst. And a reduction in the volume of the blood causes um, the drive to drink because of the release of hormone which is known as angiotensin 2 and pulled by these stimuli and, and the incentive we tend to drink more than the body need and but it is easy for the kidney to get rid of the um, excess fluid so this was all about thirst now the next topic which we will be discussing is sexual motivation which is survival of the species. Now, it is the motivation to engage in various forms of sexual activity, and it is necessary to understand that sex is not necessary to maintain the life of an individual, although it is necessary for the survival of the species. And sexual behavior is not aroused by the lack of substance in the body. Uh, when considered from a biological standpoint, sexual motivation depends on sex hormones. Now, these hormones organize the brain and body of developing person uh, and lower animals that they have male or female characteristics. And uh, 
such hormones, uh, sex hormone is produced by gnees, which are primary sex glands, um, and uh, uh, sex hormones such as estrogen and testosterone, they exert actuational effects. And uh, in their absence, equal behavior does not occur or takes uh, with a very low frequency. And as recently findings suggest that when a human is uh, human being uh, human beings are um, sexually attracted to another person, their brain produces increased amount of several substances that are related to amphetamines, which are stimulants, and cognitive factors such as our thought, feelings, fantasies, and memory play a powerful role in sexual motivation and many people respond strongly to erotic material containing other visual images or verbal descriptions and some research findings suggest that uh, uh, pheromones odorless substances produced by our bodies may play a role in um, sexual attraction and arousal now Humans are sexually aroused by what others say, by their looks, their style, their voices, the way they dress, and uh, their odor. In other words, um, much of the sexual behavior is turned on by uh, stimuli, uh, which act as incentives, uh, and hence we can say that sexual motivation is physiological in nature, but also it has basis in social needs because it involves another person and it provides the basis for uh, social groupings. Now, the next topic, the next physiological motive is sleep and rest which is an important need of the body that must be satisfied at uh, periodic intervals. Now, uh, sleep is also an important need of the body, a, um, a need that must be satisfied at periodic intervals. And whenever the person works, uh, fatigue arises, which is reducedly sleep. And the experiments in this direction show that reticular formation in the brain conduct the sleeping and working function. And it is seen in these experiments that uh, if a person, if, if a specific part of a reticular formation is stimulated, the man sleeps and wakes. And if a person, uh, for example, if a person stays awake uh, indefinitely, his power of uh, attention and his interest and energy become lax. Even though he may complete many of his uh, activities as usual, um, every person has an individual and unique habits of sleep. Now, there are some learned factors and learned factors that are important in sleep motivation. Now, as adults, we establish a sleep waking rhythm, but newborn infants do not discriminate between day and night, and they alternate uh, short periods of wakefulness with longer periods of sleep. Now, primary need for sleep often becomes closely associated with um, such accompanying uh, factors as darkness, uh, a certain kind of bed, and other situations. Now, in many cases, uh, in fact, a person cannot sleep readily even when he, try, when he is tired, um, except under specific conditions. Okay, so the next physiological motive is regulation of temperature. In short, we can say to avoid extreme heat or cold. Now, uh, regulation of temperature is the biological, or we can say it is the biological need to avoid extremes of heat or cold. And there is a need to maintain and regulate normal body temperature um, a hypothalamus in the brain regulates the body temperature whenever the body temperature dips down the normal body shivers so as to produce heat and when the body temperature shoots up we perspire a lot producing sweat which on uh, evaporation causes coldness lowering of temperature uh, which brings the temperature back to normal so uh, in this way homeostasis is maintained now certain of new tranquilizing drugs that act 
to depress the activity of the lower uh, brain centers, including hypothalamus, have occasional side effects that involve the disturbance of temperature, <clears throat> Uh, regulating mechanism, um, presumably located in the hypothalamic region. So uh, it is one of the physiological needs that our body must maintain homeostasis uh, by regulating temperature, by keeping the temperature on a normal level. So the next physiological motive is need to avoid pain. Now, in short, we can say one of the strongest needs for a human being is to need to avoid pain. So, the drive to avoid pain is one of the strongest needs for human beings and other animals. And there is a need to run for safety, to avoid any injury, and consequently, pain. And whenever... Uh, we undergo surgery, usually anesthesia is given, uh, the term which itself means no sensitivity. And there is a desire to reduce or eliminate pain and to lessen the suffering of others. Okay, so the next uh, physiological uh, motive is maternal love. Now, maternal instinct is full of love. It is also instinctive in nature and it is equally learned. Um, now, it is necessary in the development of the child following the birth of a newborn. Um, this is due to maternal inst instinct, which is full of love, care, devotion, and understanding of child's needs. Now, human mothers show maternal behavior, which is both learned and physiologically uh, and physiological in nature. So, uh, again, uh, maternal love, uh, mother's love is full of love, uh, or we can say mother or maternal instinct is full of love, care, devotion, and it's, it's, it's innate as well as it's learned. And the next physiological motive is need for respiration. In short, we can say intake of oxygen and release of carbon dioxide. Now, respiration refers to the intake of oxygen and release of carbon dioxide. The need for respiration is a necessary uh, motive because of the body needs and basis of survival. Um, even though this process goes on automatically, it is under certain circumstances urgently needed, such as during accidents, um, mountaineering in space, deep oceans, and for breathing troubles. Now, in such circumstances, need for oxygen uh, can be the strongest physiological motive, which ordinarily goes on and completely unaware as it is continuous, uh, uh, continuously and um, automatically being satisfied. Okay, last but not least, the next physiological motive is need to eliminate. Now, in short, we can say energy is consumed and the rest is turned into waste products. Now, this is another basic physiological need. And energy is consumed and, um, and the rest is turned into waste products and they are collected in the intestine and bladder and then pressure is built in the organs to release the waste products that is to eliminate. Now excretion can be uh, in the form of urine, perspiration and water. Um, urea and other unwanted uh, or extra nutrients are thrown out of the body so as to maintain the balance of the body. So these were all the factors they, 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 that comes under the physiological motives and um, uh, they play a key role in maintaining the homeostasis of a human body. So this was the end of the uh, today's video. If your concept is clear, you can like the video. If not, you can ask us in the comment section and we will be happy to help you out. Plus, if you're new to this channel, you can subscribe to your knowledge. You can subscribe to our channel. Click on the bell icon so you will never ever miss a notification. Uh, you can also share the link of this channel with your family members and friends because sharing is caring. Until then, Allah Hafiz.